Good morning. I'm the Reverend William Levwood. My pronouns are he and him. As we begin our service, I invite you to close your other windows or apps and devices. Take a deep breath and center yourself for worship. We begin by welcoming the ancestors and descendants. We welcome the ancestors, people who made each of us, the biological ancestors, spiritual ancestors, teachers and guides. We welcome those who imagined and made our congregation possible, sustaining it up to this present day. We welcome the ancestral people of this land acknowledging that our church, like all of Burke, rests on the unceded territory of the Manahoac tribe of the Great Sioux Nation. We seek healing with the people of this land whose bodies and spirits live on in their descendants, many of whom are members of the Monacan Indian Nation, the Patawomeck Indian Tribe of Virginia, and the Piscataway Indian Nation. We honor the ancestors as we move toward healing so that all the descendants together shall one day know full justice. With this, let us welcome the longings and hopes of all the descendants of all nations that we might live for them today. Good morning. We welcome you to Akatink Unitarian Universalist Church live stream worship service. I'm Sheila Doles, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Akatink UU Church is a welcoming and inclusive community that seeks to create a more just and compassionate world. All are welcome here in this justice-seeking, earth-healing community of faith. You are welcome, no matter whom you love, no matter your identity or heritage, no matter your beliefs or background, no matter your means or abilities, you are welcome here in this religious community. If you're new to Akatink and would like to talk more about this church, please be sure to reach out to me, our minister, Reverend William Levwood, on our website, www.akatinkuu.org. You can check the online order of service on the worship section. While you're on the website, be sure to check our events page for upcoming virtual gatherings and other news. Whether you're a longtime member or a newcomer or something in between, we encourage you to stay for our virtual coffee hour immediately after this service. We're so delighted that you decided to join us today. Welcome. The Flaming Chalice, <laughs> the symbol of UU faith, Unitarian Universalism of the church is an open mind, loving heart, and helping hands. The recent Disney movie, Raya and the Last Dragon, is about the land of Kumandra. Like our own United States, Kumandra is a land with a mythology of unity in the distant past. In Kumandra, there are five different regions, a dragon-shaped river snaking between them, connecting them, uniting them. That's just good, awesome. And then the Droon appear, a mysterious plague that turns living beings to stone, only to be banished by Sisu, the last dragon, who creates the dragon stone and then disappears into the mist. Humanity, though, is divided. Kumandra splits into five competing states, named after the parts of the Dragon River's body nearest to each land. Tail, talon, spine, heart, and fang. The dragon stone is kept in the region of heart. Perhaps it's because of this symbol, this clear sphere at the center, beneath the majestic arched dome that rises above heart, Sufi Muslim poet Jalaluddin Rumi 
wrote, the clear bead at the center changes everything. There are no edges to my loving now. So perhaps it's the presence of the Dragonstone, this clear bead that inspires Chief Benja, leader of heart to dream of the restoration of a united Kumandra. 20 years ago, the tragedy of 9-11 unified Americans in our shared grief. In the shadow of a contested election at the height of the culture wars, our shared experience of tragedy of outrage at cruel injustice brought us together, united in opposition to a shared enemy, united in commitment to a common purpose. Even those who opposed the entry into the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan still felt the tragedy keenly and somehow civility prevailed, even grew stronger. Now, looking back after 20 years of military effort in Afghanistan, a dream of a democratic Afghanistan that for now at least seems to have vanished in an instant. The Taliban having regained control of the country within a week of the withdrawal of US troops. We might ask ourselves about the apparent virtues of civility and unity. In this time of intense division, we long for the unity we once had or seemed to have. Like many of us, Chief Benja in the movie longs for the return to harmony and unity. Longing for the fulfillment of this dream, he hosts a banquet, inviting a party from each of the lands to come together beneath the hallowed dome, to feast together, to be united once more. But the divisions remain lurking not far beneath the surface. At the banquet, his daughter, Raya, meets and befriends the daughter of the leader of Fang. The two adolescents bond over their shared interests, their preference for casual clothing over formal wear, their love of dragons. Namari, daughter of the leader of Fang, gifts Raya a dragon pendant, depicting the last dragon, Sisu and bearing the shape of the dragon river itself. Namari also shares a secret with, with Raya, a legend that Sisu still lives and a map that shows the way to find her at the end of one of the tributaries of the great dragon river. Raya in turn sneaks off with Namari to show her where the dragon stone in, is kept and then the moment of betrayal happens. Namari sends out a flare and the soldiers of Fang arrive to steal the dragon stone. Raya's father attempts to guard the clear seed but is injured by an arrow and the people of the five lands rush to possess the stone. The dragon stone falls, shattering. And without the dragon stone, the plague of the Droon returns. Here again, myth, mirrors reality. We too have been visited by a plague, one that threatens to steal our breath and the breath of those we love. The dragon stone, the clear bead has shattered. No unity is found this time in fighting this common enemy. Instead, the division lurking not far below the surface has emerged with a vengeance. And we are left wondering, what truly is the plague ravaging our nation, our land, our world? Is it the coronavirus pandemic that steals our breath or is it the divisions between us? It seems to me, if we were united, joined together in common purpose, we could have flattened the curve a long time ago. Instead, we've allowed the virus to float proliferate, mutating new variants that threaten to evade our best efforts at containment. It certainly isn't the first virus we've allowed to proliferate and mutate into new, sometimes more virul virulent strains. We see this same pattern in the oppressive forces among us, 
all those isms and phobias that continue to divide us, attacking most harshly the most marginalized and vulnerable, just like the coronavirus pandemic. The divisions in America are real. Some we should look beyond. Others cut to the core of our deepest values. And these divisions matter. We cannot sacrifice reproductive justice or trans rights, the rights of black people, the rights of indigenous Americans, the rights of Asian Americans, the rights of Latinx Americans. We can't sacrifice any of these rights to the idol of civility. This is a broken time, a hurting time, a time of grief and mourning. And yet there is still hope. As in our opening song, the river reminds each of, of us of our part to play in the journey of healing. And the ocean, the ocean reminds us of our fundamental unity the waters of the world reminding of us of our inextricable interdependence. The journey is ours to take and perhaps we have to travel into the broken places in order for our hearts to break open in love. In the movie, Raya's father allows himself to be enveloped by the plague, by the droon and turned to stone leaving Raya with nothing to hold on to except his dream, his dream of a unified Kumandra, the dream of a harmony of differences dancing together as one, one land, one nation, and one people. This is our journey, our journey to travel together towards healing, collective liberation, renewed trust and true wholeness. And hugging, yes, hugging. Hugging a dragon, in fact. But first, we need a dragon to hug. Hello and welcome to another printable craft tutorial from Create in the Chaos. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this dragon paper bag puppet. Uh, it's a really easy craft. You'll find the download for the PDF for the craft in the description. Um, I've already went ahead and colored this. The, the PDF download is in black and white, but I went ahead and colored it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out, and then I'll show you how to put it together. Got all our pieces cut out. We're ready to put the dragon together. I'm going to go ahead and start with the head. Um, so just take your paper bag and where the flap is, I'm going to glue the head right on this part. Put a lot of glue down, be really generous with the glue so that it'll stay on there. And then you just glue the head right on. Next, we're going to attach the wings. We're going to go ahead and flip this over. And you're just going to put some glue right where it says glue on here. Each of the wings. We're going to kind of put them um, part way down on the back. Kind of do it right below where the fold is. And I just make sure when you're gluing it down that you want to be hiding the white part. So you want the seam to be hidden there. Go ahead and do that for both of your wings. And then lastly, we're gonna attach the tail, which um, we're just gonna glue right to the inside part of our bag here. And put some glue on the back of the tail, just along the top, just enough for it to grab onto the bag. We're gonna go ahead and glue it right inside there. Our dragon is almost done. Uh, the last little detail I like to add is um, when I have a little bit of tissue paper, I glue some right to the under inside his mouth here. Um, I don't have any tissue paper on hand, so today I'm going to use just a little bit of construction paper, just a small square of construction paper. But you follow the same technique if you have tissue paper. Just kind of bunch it up, 
can pop it in there. And it's got a little bit of fiery breath. Let us continue in a time of prayer and reflection. Spirit of life, spirit of love, help us to use this time as a time of reflection. As we mark the 20th anniversary of 9-11, as we continue the long march, the long marathon through this pandemic, as we feel the many griefs for all the losses, especially those losses that didn't need to be. Help us to use this as a time of reflection and comfort us, console us in all of our griefs. The loss of friends, the loss of our faculties as we age, in this time of reflection, may we be strengthened. May we find greater resolve to move the world towards the world we long for it to be. And may we celebrate together all the wonders of the world, the coolness of autumn, the glimpse that we got of that this week, the beauty of flowers, the celebration of new jobs, of friends visiting us, the joys of moving our bodies and dance, the wonders of science that can improve our eyesight and give us vaccines that protect us from disease. May we remember, Spirit of Love, as you walk with us, as you embrace us and embrace the possibilities of the world that may yet come to be, may we be reminded that love comes to each and every one of us, often as a refugee, often through those cracks that let in the light. So may we continue to offer our imperfect gifts to the world. May it be so. Amen, 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 and blessed be. We have a poem, a poem by Joy Harjo, the first Native American U.S. Poet Laureate. Note this poem uses binary gender language. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it. Babies teeth at the corners, they scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it, we make women. At this table, we gossip, recall enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves as we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table, we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet bite. Raya's father saves her from the droon, from the plague, by throwing her off a bridge into the river. Raya's father and even her betrayer, Namari, the daughter of Fang, 
together save Raya by sending her on a quest, a quest to find Sisu, the last dragon, and to reunite Kumandra, freeing the multitudes frozen into statues of stone. After being thrown into the river, the next scene shows Raya, a young adult now, perhaps 18 years old, barreling through a desert landscape. And the bulk of the movie is her journey from land to land, from the desert that is tail, to the floating market that is talon, to the frozen forest of spine, through the heart, to a showdown with Namari on the cliffs of Fang. But beneath all of this adventure is the real story. Early in the film, before the banquet, Raya's father, her ba, shows her the key to harmony, the diverse flavors that make the delicious soup of United Kamandra. The shrimp paste from tail, lemongrass from talon, bamboo shoots from spine, chili from fang, and palm sugar from heart. After finding Sisu, the last dragon, Raya picks up fellow travelers along the way and they form a unified band of seekers, each with a gift to bring to the journey, the journeying together toward healing and wholeness. These seekers have a common purpose. As they travel together, they see their way toward wholeness a wholeness founded on the sharing of gifts and the renewing of trust. We know this. We know that the healing is found in the sharing of our unique gifts, our diverse gifts, that the healing is found in the soup, the wholesome broth that brings together all the flavors in a oneness, a oneness that is full with each flavor still distinct the sharp bite of the chili peppers, the salt of the shrimp, the tang of the lemongrass, bamboo shoots providing the backbone and the sweet, sweet, kind heart of the palm sugar. May we find our way back to trust. May we journey together toward healing and wholeness by lifting up the diverse gifts that each person each people, each culture, each identity brings to the collective, brings to the communal soup. Let us continue in a time of meditation. We're going to revisit the grounding meditation that we did last Sunday and then move into what's known as resourcing. These skills come from the Trauma Resilience Institute. So just like that strong mountain, feel your feet on the ground, feel your thighs on your chair, perhaps your arms on the sides of your chair. Focus your attention as you ground with the earth on those parts of your body that are in contact with something other than yourself. And remember as you're grounding, as Nancy Stark Smith, whose wisdom I seem to be sharing every week, may her memory be for a blessing. As Nancy Stark Smith often reminded folks, the earth is bigger than us. The earth is bigger than us. So take solace and sanctuary and ground yourself in the fact that the earth is so much bigger than us. And from this place of grounding, bring to your mind, to your imagination, to your consciousness, I invite you to close your eyes, though you can keep them open if you like, bring to your mind the image of, an image of protection, of a protector or a nurturer. For me, that image is of a dragon. For you, it might be something else. It could be an image of strength, like the mountain in the song, or it could be you feel protected by what brings you a sense of peace, like the river in the song or something else. But for me, it's a dragon and it's a dragon because the dragon has that fierce power and that sturdiness and groundedness, but also that flight 
that makes me feel protected. So I can call on that image of a dragon whenever I need to place myself in a protected presence. You might have a different image. You might have a different dragon. It might be more of a trickster dragon like Sisu from the movie, Raya and the Last Dragon, whatever it is. I want you to bring that image to mind. Close your eyes and really make that image clear and distinct. What colors do you see? My dragon has scales that are purple and orange. It has horns of fiery red. It's got a little Buddha-like smile on its face and its wings, which it sometimes stretches out, are magnificent in their wingspan. And its tail flickers in the background. And there's the smell in the cave where I'm meeting with this dragon. Smell of licorice and sandalwood. What smells are you smelling as you're in the presence of your protector? Is it warm or cool? Is there a breeze? A sense of humidity in the air? Whatever it is, make the image really clear and strong. And just breathe and take in that image for a moment or two. Feel the gift that it has to offer you. And know that you can call on this image as a resource. Whenever you feel bumped out of your comfort zone and you're feeling agitated or anxious or scared, whenever you're feeling bump below into a sense of depletion, even depression, you can call on this image of the protector to support you through that time to ground and center you in your deepest resources that live within you and that are available to you through community and through that earth that is bigger than us. Let's bring this meditation to a close. Amen, 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 and blessed be. An important part of the message of the movie Riot and the Last Dragon is the importance of the restoration of trust. Now that's not an easy thing to do. The journey towards reconciliation requires the bringing of our full selves on the journey. That journey together towards wholeness is fraught because we're all broken. And each of our perspectives alone is partial. This is the time in the Jewish tradition between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And on Yom Kippur, there's a communal recitation of our collective sins. We can think of sinning as the crack in everything. And remember that that's how the light gets in. So on Yom Kippur, there's this recitation of collective sins. We repent for the collective sin of racism. We repent, repent for the collective sins that have brought about the climate crisis. We repent as a community. Why we? The we is important because it acknowledges our interdependence acknowledges that it's as a community that we have sinned, as a community that we've missed the mark, that we've made mistakes and caused harm. And so together, collectively, we repent, signifying that it's as a community that we can and we must journey together towards healing, towards wholeness. Now this journeying towards healing and wholeness is often labyrinthian, often river shaped, water dragon shaped. Often we seem to be turning away 
from the goal as part of that journey. In our collective journeying together towards healing and wholeness, we need to remember that sometimes, as Rebecca Solnit reminds us, the most significant movements were often regarding, regarded as having failed because they didn't immediately lead to short-term or specific goals. But in the long-term, they often made the very premises by which decisions were made and facts were interpreted and how people imagine themselves, each other, their possibilities, their rights, and society. They often changed the very premises of who decided, who interpreted, what was visible and audible, whose voice and vision mattered. So how do you hug a water dragon? How do you embrace a possibility that doesn't yet exist? If you want to know how to hug a water dragon, begin by making the first move towards trust, towards healing, towards wholeness. If you want to know how to hug a water dragon, take risks strategic risks that create the conditions for something new to arise. If you wanna know how to hug a water dragon, live into your depths, develop your understanding of yourself and of others. If you want to hug a water dragon, begin by telling your story, even the painful parts, even the shameful parts to someone who will listen and be with you in the telling. If you want to know how to hug a water dragon, become a person who knows how to listen to someone else's story, even the painful parts, especially the shameful parts. Become that person who can really be with another on their journey, their messy, confusing, labyrinthian journey toward healing and wholeness. If you wanna know how to hug a water dragon, step outside your comfort zone. Choose to get close to the experience of those whose identities, whose gifts are different from yours, are marginalized. Enter into dialogue and partnership with those marginalized communities, with communities of color, with queer communities, with poor communities. If you wanna know how to hug a water dragon, Move at the speed of trust. The speed of trust is both bold and humble, both urgent and patient. The speed of trust is resilient and adaptable and remains committed even when, most importantly when, the destination seems furthest away and our collective efforts to re reach it the mo are, seem the most insufficient to the task. This, this is how to hug a water dragon. So may we continue journeying together toward healing and wholeness with bold humility, with patient urgency, with a commitment to the dream of the possible that just won't quit, that just won't stop until the healing is ours and the wholeness is real for everyone. May it be so, and may we be among those who make it so. Amen, 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 and blessed be. Though we extinguish our chalice flame, we carry within us what we kindled, the light of inspiration, warmth of compassion, fire of commitment. May we bring these gifts into our lives and share them radiantly out into the world. I invite you now to join me in our community blessing with these words of David Bumba. This church is dedicated to the proposition that behind all our differences, and beneath all our diversity, there is a unity that makes us one and binds us forever together in spite of time, death, and the space between the stars. We pause now in silent witness to that unity. 
May we move forward on our journeying together towards healing and wholeness. May we embrace the, all the possibilities that are yet to be. May we hug the water dragons in our midst by learning each other, by joining together in coalition, by celebrating the diverse gifts that each of us bring to the collective, the communal soup. May it be so.